right, now we're going to go ahead and we're going to be looking at how to write the equation of an original function when we're given a point and uh, the derivative of the function. So the idea here is that we can find k, our constant, this way because we know a point that exists on the original function, so k can be determined. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take the indefinite integral. So again, I'm going to add 1 to my exponent and I get 3. That means I times my leading co my coefficient by one third, so I end up with four thirds x cubed minus this is x to the one, so I add one. So my new exponent is two. That means I times negative three by half. So minus three halves x squared. By the way, this is a one, not a, a plus sign. And I'm going to add k. Okay, so what I know for sure is that this is the indefinite integral. I also know that I have a of x, which is y, and I also have an x value, as well as an unknown constant, which is k. So to go ahead and um, figure out what k is, I'm going to substitute negative 5 in for a of x, and I'm going to go ahead and put 1 in for x. Okay, so... I don't know k, so that's going to be the only variable in my equation. So just as a reminder, if I have one variable to solve for, I need one equation. So we end up with negative 5 equals 4 thirds minus 3 halves plus k. So that would give you a little fraction work out here. So I'm going to go ahead and get a common denominator by, um, you know, figuring out uh, what goes into each of these denominators. So 6 is going to be the, the denominator of choice. I'm going to multiply the denominators, this one by 2. What I do to the denominator, I have to do the numerator. Same here, 2 times 3 is 6. So I multiply the denominator by 3, so I do the same to the numerator. I'm kind of going fast because I know that you all know how to do this. So, okay, so there I have written this as a common denominator. And now I'm going to combine, oh I'm running out of room, combine my two fractions together to get negative one six. So that means that I've got to add one six to both sides to get k by itself. And now to get a common denominator underneath five, I'm looking to have a common denominator of six, so I multiply the denominator by six as well as the numerator by six. So I end up with negative thirty over six plus one six equals k, so we end up with negative 29 over 6 equals k. So my final equation would be, I wish I had my room, I'm basically going up to here and I'm going to ditch my k because I, I know what k is now. Okay, maybe I'll erase k. I'm erasing k and I'm going to write, and I should it's my plus sign, it's my negative sign. I'm going to put negative, I'm going to substitute negative 29 over 6 for k. And this is the equation of a of x. Notice there is no k, so we the only variables we have are x and a of x. All right, let's try this one more time to make sure that you have the hang of it. All right, so it says find the equation of b of x, which passes through 8, 10. And um, we're given the derivative of b of x, which is b prime of x equals 7x minus 3. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to find the indefinite integral. So we end up with an exponent of 1, so plus 1. So we end up with x squared. That means we times 7 by half. And we end up with 7 over 2, or 3.5. This is x to the power of 0 because it doesn't exist. So we're going to add 1 here and multiply 3 by 1 over 1. So we end up with minus 3x plus k. All right. So now I'm basically, I'm going to rewrite this up here so I have more room. You know I love fractions, so I'm going to keep 7 halves as a fraction instead of a decimal. All right. So now all I'm going to do is I'm going to take the point that exists on the original function b of x, and I'm going to plug it in for x, and in this case b of x, or you could say y. So 10 equals 7 halves times 8 squared minus 3 times 8 plus k. 
Wow, I chose some wonderful numbers, didn't I? So 7 halves um, times 64 over 1 minus 24 plus k. All right, so um, 10 equals, I'm going to go ahead and just cross read these here. So 64 divided by 2 is 32. So 7 times 32, this is sort of our denominator, which is pretty handy, is um, 224 minus 24 plus k. All right. So I'm going to combine my like terms on this side. So I end up with 200 plus k minus 200 from both sides. 200, and I end up with 190 equals k. It's quite the function if I do say so. So I'm going to go ahead, maybe I'm going to go ahead and move the k here. And I'm going to substitute negative 190 in for k. So the equation of this function, which happens to be quadratic, is 7 halves x squared minus 3x minus 190. This is quite the y-intercept. Um, it's a very interesting parabola. So um, that is how you find the equation of an original function using an indefinite integral and a point which resides on the original function. I also want to note that you know, both of these examples, the k term was negative. That's not always the case. It just happened to be that the numbers worked out this way. So that is all for this screencast. And um, to end our Halloween theme, happy Halloween to you. See you in class on Friday.